Hey everybody, Rob Mauer here. We've got a pretty quiet news day today in the Tesla world, but thankfully a listener sent over a really interesting competition between advanced driver assistance systems that happened in China a couple months ago. So we'll talk about that. Really interesting stuff there. Got a couple of updates on Giga Berlin, uh, some news from Kia reacting to Tesla's price cuts and a couple other items as well. Looking at the stock, Tesla today down one and a quarter percent, closing at $127.17. Well, the NASDAQ was down 1% on the day, so uh, you know, kind of the performance you'd expect, maybe a little bit better than what we'd expect from Tesla on the day today, but again, pretty quiet. So let's move into this uh, competition that we see here. So this was uh, presented on a car show in China called D-Car uh, Competition E. So basically what they're doing here is they're comparing through a series of different uh, testing criteria, a few different electric vehicles that are on the market in China. So we've got the Tesla Model 3 equipped with FSD, we got the Zeker 001, the BYD Seal, the BYD Han, and the Chang'an SL03. Then there was one from Neo too, but the Neo one did not participate in this for some reason. Uh, they said that it was a test vehicle of some variety. Not sure that, um, not sure exactly why they didn't include the Neo in this, but I think they said that the the 8S stuff was not working for the Neo. But anyway, kind of a funny premise here. They they said that a lot of new vehicle buyers, new EV buyers, are buying their first car and maybe not the best drivers. Uh, so they had this little false premise that they set up that uh, the new new vehicle purchaser would be picking up a blind date and have to be relying on the 8S systems to not embarrass themselves as drivers in front of the blind date. So uh, just a set up premise, but uh, pretty funny to watch through this. I put the link in the description. I would recommend watching it. Uh, they've got the entire video translated at the bottom there in subtitles. So it was a fun one to watch, but the Tesla performed pretty well through the variety of these tests. I'll just show you a quick clip of, of what they're testing here. Dan O'Dowd would love this setup, a uh, pretty high budget setup, but you can see here the types of things that they were testing. So pedestrians crossing streets, a variety of different tests of similar types of, of things that they were seeing how the ADAS systems would react to. So here's a quick clip of, of one thing that they're doing there and you can see a uh, failure here from one of the other vehicles uh, obviously um, Tesla has has done a lot of testing on these types of things and um, you know we've seen some of those as well but in these tests that they have set up they ran 10 different ones and the Tesla Model 3 got a perfect score across the board so every single other vehicle that they tested you can see here how they performed the red would be failures uh, and then there's some that you know, an indicator there of sort of an okay score. And uh, we see that the Tesla Model 3 outperforming in, in every single, um, or performing perfectly in every single test that they ran uh, and outperforming all other vehicles in this test. And you can see here uh, at the bottom of the translation here, I know it's a little bit covered by the, the blur there, but Tesla actually passed all tests with a perfect score. Uh, so it was super fun to see that. Again, the link for that is in the description, but I know we've been talking a lot about the, the competition in China and, and things like that, but it is helpful to see I think some good coverage here of Tesla's FSD system and how it performs relative to some competitors. Obviously, this is not the, the be all end all of testing of those things, but uh, I think it was a pretty good and pretty robust test. Again, they, you know, pretty high budget setup here that they uh, tested things on. So nice to see, particularly against BYD, that we've been talking about uh, Tesla perform, you know, significantly better in some of the more technology oriented uh, type of tasks. Uh, so good to see that. Next here, we've got an update on the Tesla Semi. So the Modesto B covering an event from PepsiCo, obviously has taken delivery of the first couple of semis here. And basically they're just kind of talking about it, talking about the Modesto plant in general, the sustainability goals that they have out of that plant. They showed off six Tesla Semis, so it kind of gave us a count. Presumably that would be all the Tesla Semis that they have there at this point in time. Maybe a couple were out doing other things, but uh, six Tesla Semis on display there. And then they also talk just about the plant in general, how they have been able to cut the greenhouse emissions from their fleet at the plant by 91%. So that's across the Tesla semis. And then they've got another couple vehicles here from I think Volvo uh, that I'm not sure if those would be battery or probably battery, but uh, maybe hybrid type of situation or just lower range semis. But uh, they've been able to cut their emissions by 91% through this process, which they say already with just you know a handful of Tesla semis here and a couple other vehicles, is equivalent to the reduction that uh, 1,000 normal SUVs being taken off the road uh, would equate to. So pretty cool to see that update. And obviously they talked about how this is really just a, an initial demonstration and they hope to expand this well beyond what they have in Modesto. They said that they chose Modesto because it's just a really poor 
city and region for uh, emissions and, and pollution and things like that. They say that it's the sixth sixth worst nation, uh, sixth worst city in the nation for particular met for particulate matter and thirteenth worst for ozone. Don't know why I couldn't get through that one, but uh, you know it's it's nice to see that there is some efforts there in such a difficult type of environment to to make some changes and hopefully clean some of that up for for that town. So good to see that. Then we've got a couple updates on Giga Berlin here. Nothing too major. The headline here kind of sounds pretty aggressive. So Tesla Works Council accuses IG Metal of misinformation. This is reported from RBB24. They are saying that Tesla, in a letter to employees that was from Tesla's Works Council, which we've, of course, talked about a decent amount in uh, Giga Berlin, they've accused IG Metal of you know trying to manipulate the workforce in certain different ways that they the Works Council has communicated are not proper, uh, borderline, potentially illegal, um, and accusing them basically of just misrepresenting information to employees. So, you know, that's probably sort of standard practice here where the there's this competition with IG Metal that obviously wants Tesla employees to be a part of its union, IG Metal, obviously the largest automotive union in Europe. Tesla has the Works Council, which would be not necessarily a union as we think of it today, but a representative force for the labor force. And um, IG Metal obviously wants to sort of take that over, have an active role in it, uh, like they do with other automakers. Tesla obviously doesn't want that. Uh, so there's you know this this back and forth that I think we're going to continue to see for for quite some time. So you know there are some accusations here. IG Metal kind of denying them, and again I think it's just part of that normal back and forth that we might see in. Uh, circumstances like that. We also got an update here from Jörg Steinbach today saying that Tesla should ramp up output uh, at Giga Berlin. Talks about how they have been aggressively hiring. Uh, not too much more news from that, but a headline today that got some attention. So just wanted to kind of point out that nothing too important breaking from that. Got an update here from Drive Tesla Canada noting that Tesla has sent its first shipment of cars to Thailand, or rather the first shipment has arrived now in Thailand. So we talked about the design studio opening up there back in December, and it looks like the first shipment now of, I believe I saw on Twitter, about 1,300 cars or so uh, arriving in Thailand. So nice to see that for uh, a new market for Tesla. And then we also have an update to the Tesla loot box. Tesla has added the... Uh, option in the loot box to purchase full self-driving with referral credits. It does cost 240,000 credits, so that is a heck of a lot of solar referrals. But, you know, we may see Tesla adapt the referral program over time. That has frequently changed throughout Tesla's history. So right now it is just for solar, but maybe we see that make another appearance for vehicle sales or or things like that. So uh, 240,000 credits. Uh, they, of course, previously offered the acceleration boost for 40,000. The Enhanced autopilot option is also available for 120,000 credits. Uh, just did some quick quick math on that. I think that comes out to about six cents per credit for the FSD option, which compares favorably to some other things. Uh, the acceleration boost is half a cent, or sorry, five cents per credit. Uh, the wall connector would be about seven cents. So it's maybe not the best value in the store, but uh, you know it is somewhat reasonable relative to some of the other things that Tesla's offering. But again, quite a stretch to get up to that many credits. Um, next year, we've got a really interesting update from Kia. So Kia's president in the UK and CEO in the UK, uh, Paul Philpot, <laughs> nice UK name right there. Uh, he is saying he responded to Tesla's pricing strategy, and he says it's a pretty dangerous strategy to reduce prices and that Kia has a lot of other tools at their disposal before they would employ price changes. He talks about the risk to residual values. Uh, he talks about just how a lot of vehicles are bought on lease, and obviously residual value is a component of how lease financing is structured. So he sort of presents it as being concerned about the customer here and what that could do to the equity they may, they may have at the end of the lease. But I think the real concern that he's expressing relates more to their business and the risk of the leases on the business end if those residual values don't really live up to uh, how the lease is modeled, and also how that might impact the modeling for leases going forward, which is probably even a, a more significant um, worry. So probably could spend a lot more time on that topic and probably should someday, but uh, you know, I think this kind of gives a hint at how automakers are worried about the price changes that they've seen from Tesla and are kind of talking about all these other things as maybe excuses for why they can't lower prices or why they rather don't want to lower prices. But I think in reality, it's more of a, a can't rather than don't want to. 
So in terms of some of the other actions that they may take before that, he says, we will watch what happens in the market, but there are actions we would take before we look to reduce prices from controlling supply, offering finance support, or looking at tactical offerings, all of which would be designed to protect existing owners. So I highlighted controlling supply there in a different color for those of you that are on audio today, but the it's, it's incredibly interesting here to say, for him to say that, you know, right out or outright, they would reduce supply, otherwise known as cutting production, losing market share before they would consider uh, reducing prices, which sure that might work in the interim period, but the more and more market share that you give up, the more economies of scale that you lose and the worse that makes your cost structure. So it's, you know, he calls this price cuts a a dangerous strategy. I would argue that this is a much, much more dangerous strategy uh, than cutting prices when you have the margin to do so, but not everyone is in that position. So we've talked a lot about how the pressure or the amount of pressure that this is going to put on other automakers, uh, that the actions that we have seen from Tesla. And I think the reaction here from Kia makes that incredibly clear and points out just how you know dangerous they view this threat to be. So it's going to be really interesting to continue to follow this uh, as we you know see how all of this shakes out. It's very early stages following that price cut right now. But we'll see how that really shakes out through the rest of this year in what's probably already an extremely challenging year in the automotive market in general because of higher interest rates. All right, next up, we've got another update from Hertz. They have been coming out with a lot of EV related news. Uh, Today, they announced a Hertz Electrifies program, which they are launching in Denver first. They say that this is a new public private partnership between Hertz and different cities around the country. Uh, with the aim of transforming the rental industry and accelerating the mainstream adoption of EVs. So reading through the press release, I'm not exactly clear on how this partnership is being structured between Hertz and and the public. Uh, They talk about the partnership with Denver, uh, but really what they say here is that they're going to be, you know, from Hertz's end, they're going to be installing EV charging, some of that at Hertz locations, some of that in partnership with companies like BP, um, And then they say that they're going to bring um, rental EVs to those markets. But it seems like that would be things that Hertz is already doing. So I'm not really sure where the the public or the partnership part comes in, other than there are a couple of things here about uh, job opportunities and and things like that. But again, I think these are things Hertz is doing already. So it's kind of interesting. I'm not sure where they're getting the the public buy-in from. uh, And it doesn't really discuss exactly what the benefits or rather what the public would be bringing to the table in this partnership in terms of um, maybe investments or other things like that. So interesting, but again, you know, I don't think it's it's anything really new with Hertz's strategy, but, and probably the most interesting part, uh, the public partnership part, we don't really get much information on, but, you know, always good to see Hertz doing more on EVs. All right, last couple of things here, just uh, quick notes on Starlink, a couple of really interesting developments over the last couple of days I wanted to pass along. So Carnival Cruises, which had previously announced, I think a a partnership with Starlink for the Carnival line is now announcing that the corporation is going to be expanding the Starlink partnership across all of their brands. Uh, So Carnival, uh, Carnival Corporation, the largest cruise company in the world, their entire fleet is going to be partnering with Starlink now. And then similar news from Thor, which is the largest RV manufacturer, recreational vehicle manufacturer in the world as well. So they have announced that they are entering into a, an agreement with Starlink to integrate Starlink into some of their newer RVs in 2023. So this is cool. Obviously, we know uh, SpaceX has offered the, the RV product now for quite some time, but to have it integrated into the vehicle where people are going to be you know, browsing around and and shopping for RVs and to have that as an option for it to be directly integrated. I think that's going to be a huge boost to interest in Starlink and things like that. And I think it's also just, you know, makes the process for people a lot simpler, a lot more streamlined, uh, which should help, you know, grow the adoption. So pretty exciting couple of days there for Starlink partnerships that I wanted to pass along. All right, that is it for today. So as always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla podcast. And we'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, January 20th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.